Well, what, why long leaf? Uh, as well, I have it. I, I suppose I could also uh, include here why long leaf for aesthetics? Uh, why long leaf for uh, uh, wildlife related recreation? Well, the long leaf pine has a, uh, several characteristics that that uh, uh, that facilitates uh, the, the establishment and sustainability of the wildlife habitat over time. Lonely pine is very fire tolerant, uh, 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 much more so than other southern pine species. Uh, we can burn longleaf at uh, pretty much every stage of, of growth. Uh, we can burn them early, as you see here. We can burn them often, uh, and there's really never a time. have to exclude fire from a long way stand. So, uh, again, that fire tolerance, a high, uh, high level tolerance of fire, again, allows us great flexibility uh, to do uh, wildlife habitat management. Th there's some evidence out there that suggests that lonely pine, because of its open nature and fire tolerance, uh, we can, we can um, we can carry more stems per acre and still have good quality uh, wildlife habitat. Lonely pine is a long lived species. Um, and why is that important? Well, um, if, if you're taking the natural route to creating and sustaining wildlife habitat, it often takes many, many years uh, to, to get there, especially if you're managing long lived habitat on successfully drought deep sandy sites. Uh, those sites are, are, are fairly poor uh, to, to begin with, and if there's been a lot of mechanical disturbance on those kind of sites, and there were more stored native ground cover on those sites, uh, it generally takes a very, very long time. And having a long-lived species out there that's not uh, nearly as susceptible to uh, beetles and, and other things that the other southern pine species trees are, uh, it just helps in, in, in developing that rich ground cover. Well, compared to loblolly, um, there are some problems with, with loblolly. If, 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 if wildlife habitat is the, what's driving decision making, you, you may not want to select loblolly. Um, not, not suggesting loblolly pine plantations or loblolly states can't produce good wildlife habitat. Can. But there are some problems with it. Uh, because of the genetically improved stock and, and the competition management we do on the front end of the lava white pine stand, that generally leads to rapid canopy closure. And remember, I said that, uh, uh, that the long leaf has a very open morphology or open crown uh, structure. Uh, lava white has a much more dense crown structure, so it allows. Uh, less sunlight through the forest canopy. So you've got rapid crown closure, uh, dense canopy, leads to a compression of early successional window. Well, when it comes to establishing lonely pine, lonely pine habitat, there's a lot of things we have to consider. But perhaps some of the most key uh, factors to, to consider would be uh, side crowding. Proper site prep is a key, and this is a pro this is an area where I see a lot of problems uh, with uh, lonely pond habitat establishment. Good quality seedlings, um, I think we probably all know by now um, how important having good quality, healthy lonely seedlings are uh, to uh, seedling survival and, and subsequent, subsequent growth. Uh, I think we all probably know by now how important planting them is on the form of seedlings uh, and certainly controlling competition, particularly that that first um, and maybe even the second year uh, after, after planting. Well, site preparation, of course, is important on uh, cut over sites because we have to gain planting access. Uh, uh, falling a, a, a clear cut is generally pretty nasty. Um, and planting access can be a potential problem. So we have to do site prep 
just so we can gain access to the site, you know, plant our trees, uh, competition control, doesn't matter if it's a clear-cut site or old ag site, com get, uh, competition control is, is, is critical. And the site prep methods that we use can vary greatly. And it primarily depends um, on the site, but, but uh, of course, temp mechanical, chemical, fire, or a combination of, of those. This is a clear cut um, in a Tonga County. I think the problem you see is pretty obvious, right? Um, a lot of woody competition. Um, and another problem you might can see is right here and right over here. Um, it was suggested that after the site was uh, planted that these loblolly patches loblolly be taken out and they were not. As a result, we got massive intrusion of loblolly pine in this clear cut. This, on the other hand, is is uh, the result of adequate site prep. Um, it, it, we even come back in, as you see, with hand crews and started uh, uh, chopping away at some of the loblolly that, that, that is seeping in. Ag, ag, ag sites. Uh, Ag sites can be a, a little more challenging than clear-cut sites because the, the weed competition is generally a, a much greater than ag sites. And, uh, we may want to use fire, especially if we do herbicide treatment, use fire to clean up uh, the debris that, that we create with herbicide. Uh, certainly, you'd want to scout old, old ag sites, uh, regardless if it's row crop or pasture or hay. Uh, scalping is, is good at reducing uh, weed competition. Subsoil is important on these sites. Generally, you don't have a hard pan or a plow pan on these sites, and, and uh, subsoil breaks up that hard pan. And on, on wetter sites, it also can have a drainage. Uh, of course, you plant, and, and you may, you may not, but you may uh, need to come back the following year and do an advanced spray over your row. But, but uh, here, here's a hay field, uh, or a field that was in hay, and uh, uh, of course, a field like this, you want to do a broadcast application of herbicide to eliminate those grasses. Uh, again, if, if, if you want to develop a civil pasture system, you don't have to do it. Uh, but if wildlife is important, <coughs> you have to. You can't. Uh, you can't establish wildlife habitat on sites without without doing it. Uh, so, broadcast application of herbicide. Here's. Here's where a lot of mistakes are made on ag sites. Um, a landowner have pasture, they do a broadcast application of herbicide, then they come in and plant trees. I suggest, especially if I'm even the least bit suspicious, that there's maybe Bermuda grass on that site or land going underneath that other grass and killed. If I'm just the least bit suspicious that it may may occur, I'm going to suggest to you that you don't plant that first year. Row crop field, here's, uh, again, if you, I, I, I'm a huge advocate. If you take in a field out of production, let it fallow for at least one year before you put trees to the ground. Um, if you don't, um, well, if we were to drive by this and we pick up, we look out our window, we look at this, and this is a really good habitat, good for quail, right? Well, in fact, it's not good quail habitat at all because if we were to we walk off in here, all the ground beneath this broom sedge canopy, it's all Bermuda grass. Okay, um, lonely pine restoration is, is a lot more than just planting trees. It, it's, it's, it's perhaps uh, ground covers is, is more important, and again, Ted hit on it, Mark hit on it. Ground covers are critical, uh, perhaps not consider this as, as much as it should in the restoration project. But basically we have two options. We can restore the ground cover artificially or we can restore it naturally. Without doubt, if you've got a viable and diverse seed bank, natural regeneration is your best option. Here's an example where we took an old field at Lake Fallow. This field actually Lake Fallow for three years. And uh, and uh, Lake Fallow for a while because we, we suspected Bermuda because there's some in this field right here. Thankfully, there was no Bermuda there. And scalp, subsoil, planted lonely pine, we've got a very, very diverse ground color right here. Uh, artificial regeneration certainly is an option. 
Um, but if you have to do it or you want to do it, uh, make sure that you select species that are suitable to each site. Use native species. Um, I, the, the talk you'll hear this afternoon, you'll understand why I su suggest that. Um, consider herbicide tolerance. We've got a very, very long list of plants, uh, options uh, of plants that we can plant on sites, but not all of them are going to be, have the same level of tolerance of herbicide that we may use. Um, this is another big mistake that I see. I see landowners mixing three, four, five uh, different seeds. They don't consider the tolerance level of herbicide. Uh, make, make sure your seed mixture, they all can tolerate the amount of herbicide you've got to uh, plant. Okay, now we've got our trees planted and our ground cover restored. How do we manage it? Well, uh, sticking with the theme of an indoor field trip, I think Ted come with that term earlier. This is the, on the property. In fact, you see, I was kind enough to give Ted photo credit for it. This was on the property that we would have seen today if we could have had the meeting uh, east of here or west of here. Well, without doubt, fire is is uh, the best tool we have for managing these only pine systems. In fact, fire is, is responsible for the development and uh, maintenance of the southern pine forest. And it was just as relevant back in the day, and it's just as relevant today. Uh, there's really no substitute for it. Um, um, uh, gosh, you guys probably have heard this a lot. Ted mentioned it, Mark mentioned it. I won't go over it because I'm running into the break time. A uh, couple things to consider with fire. Again, site conditions and landowner goals. You've heard me say that a lot already. Uh, wildlife habitat requirements. Um, season of burn, growing season of burn, we know better hardwood control. Don't think, though, that you're going to get hardwood control with just one growing season of burn. Probably not going to happen. It generally takes several burn, growing season of burns over a period of time to accomplish it. But season of fire is less important than the frequency uh, of fire. Last slide, I think, Mark. Uh, here's the CRP uh, Lone Leaf stand over in Dallas County. This is a, a low, flat field, poorly drained, very productive site. There's a rolling CRP. CRP contract said we'll have three fires on this over a period of 15 years. Well, that wasn't adequate. It was more of a program driven approach as opposed to a landlord goal, site condition approach. Goal here, create and sustain quail habitat. Um, and uh, three, three fires in 15 years wasn't going to do it. And also, three fires in 15 years is not going to maintain this site. It's too productive. You need a fire that's more, more frequent than, than that. Great stand of Wally, um, but uh, um, you go in this thing, this is what you look at. It's very, very dense. Uh, stand of broom sedge. Broom sedge is a good plant, but too much of it is a bad thing. Again, there's quail use this year one, year two after burn, but year three after burn, they left this and moved, went into this wildlife plantation. If I'm managing a quail, I want, this, I want my, this, this, this field to be usable for quail every year, not two out of the three. So we went to the local uh, office, they okayed a two year burn regime on this field, and, and now everybody's happy. Landowners happy, quail's happy, 